welcome to our presentation uh, called a game can a game bring in commitment and change and i'm happy to see that so many of you could come uh, my name is Liv Jonsson and I work at Maverick by Sigma as a communication strategist and this is my colleague. My name is Artem, I'm from Sigma Ukraine, Ukraine I'm part of Sigma and I am a business development and project manager for Sigma Ukraine company. Mm. And today we'll talk about the gamification. Mm. Yes, and uh, at the end uh, there will be some time for you to ask questions if you have any or uh, you can meet us uh, outside later on. So. So let's get started. Well, let's start with what is gamification? Many of you might have heard about it and many of you might even be very familiar to it. But uh, just to make sure, I will uh, do just tell you what it is. Gamification, it is the use of game design elements, game thinking and game mechanics to enhance engagement and motivation in non-game contexts. So that is uh, what gamification actually <coughs> is all about. And when it comes to what do we mean by game design elements, for instance, it could be like uh, gaining fame and attention, uh, recognizing patterns, uh, collecting points and badges and all that, uh, getting a reward for efforts, uh, Easter eggs, uh, it's actually like surprises within a game um, that will be able to take you to another level in the game or something like that. And uh, also to organize and to create order, uh, to give and receive gifts, lead others, be the hero, of course, everyone wants to be a hero, uh, raise your status. Cultivate and see it grow. Using avatars, uh, levels, like you level up uh, in a game, and also that could be applied in other contexts. Uh, quests and visual progression, just to, to see how your progression is going forward and so on. And also social networking. All these are examples of gaming elements. But when it comes to work and play, how does that match? Uh, when at work, of course, you should work and all that, and not play. But actually, uh, this could be a perfect mix. Uh, studies have shown that if uh, gamification is implemented in uh, this type of context, uh, work will be even more um, improved and so on. Uh, we will show you some examples later on. Um, and also, when is it uh, appropriate to use gamification? Uh, it could, for instance, be in training. Uh, for instance, I've been working with e-learning since the early 90s. And in e-learning, uh, gamification elements are often used. And also later on, Arten will show an example of uh, a gamified training. Uh, that has been a real success. Uh, recruitment. Why not use gamification just to make sure you uh, hire the right employee and with the right skills and so on. This is uh, used in some companies and for instance in the, the army it's used as well as a way to uh, sort out which one is the most appropriate. Uh, customer engagement. As you know, uh, we are uh, buying things and so on, and almost all, all of uh, the companies nowadays have this, uh, like you get points if you buy more and so on, and then you can become a gold member, and you can see where you are, like you level up and you get even more points, and then you might also have gifts if you get to a certain level and so on. And employee performance, like you, uh, for employee performance, uh, the a way to visualize your progress, uh, it shows that if you can see your progress and where you are, and uh, using uh, like you level up and so on, that motivates people even more to um, yeah, to em 
improve and so on. Uh, innovation management, a way to uh, reveal creativity. Uh, I will show uh, an example uh, just in a, in a while where this has uh, been really a success. Personal development, also a way to see your progress in personal developments, to visualize it and to yeah, see your um, what you call progress and all that. And wellness, uh, of course, many of you might use uh, Run Keeper uh, or something like that if you are out um, running and so on. Also, uh, applications like LifeSum, where you put in what you eat and what you do, and then you can see your progress and where you are at and so on. And also, there are uh, applications where you uh, compete with others and so on, uh, trying to uh, being better and so on. And actually, I don't know if uh, some of you have tried the zombie run. Uh, it's <laughs> uh, they taken it to yet another le level. Uh, it's an application where you are out running and actually it's like you're being chased by zombies and you have to run for your life. So <laughs> if you're not that much into running, this might be the <laughs> application that helps you. <laughs> And I will show you an example uh, where the use of gamification elements. Uh, you might not think about it. I, I believe that many of you might be on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn has used gamification elements just to uh, engage and motivate their users. Uh, this is my LinkedIn. Uh, as you can see, I'm not very active. <laughs> So I get this information that uh, my profile, I am a beginner and I can see what I have to do to improve my profile and uh, using uh, progression bars, it's uh, some elements that are bought from, uh, from uh, gamification world or for the, from the world of gaming. And also uh, a quite new feature is the one with endorsements. And endorsements, uh, it could be seen as a gift. Someone is giving you a gift and you get happy. Oh, he wants to endorse me for this and that. And also you can give gifts to others with endorsements. And this is also uh, gaming elements that have been put in this uh, area just to motivate people and to engage people even more. This is a quite interesting uh, project uh, it's called Foldit and it's uh, actually it's about innovation and it was uh, this university in Washington that had doing this research project for over 15 years and they realized that they couldn't get further. Uh, they were um, researching uh, about proteins and proteins can be folded in like thousands of ways and it takes very much time and effort to do this research. So they decided to create a game, a puzzle, and invite everyone in the whole world <laughs> to participate and try to create uh, different forms of proteins. And uh, the first week there were over 40, 47,000 people getting in there and doing this, uh, creating these proteins. Mm. And within two weeks, they have solved uh, lots of those problems that they had. And this is a game that is still ongoing. Uh, and the aim is uh, to uh, get the targeted drugs to defeat diseases like uh, cancer, HIV, Ebola and all that. Because if you uh, get uh, good proteins to work with, you can do this uh, uh, targeted drugs much better and so on. So all of you could actually participate and maybe just the protein that you create could be the solution to HIV. So uh, this is quite interesting. 
This is another example of uh, gamification. It's uh, an experiment that they did here in Sweden. It's uh, the uh, high-speed lottery <laughs> call. And uh, they noticed that uh, when putting up cameras, people were like, oh, you get punished if you drive too fast. And then they tried to turn it the other side around. What if they get benefits and rewarded for driving below speed limit instead? So they made this uh, camera, uh, speed camera lottery. And everyone that drove under the, the speed limit, they were in a lottery. And uh, actually, I believe that the, the people that drove too fast, the money that were the, mm -hmm. <laughs> that that money were uh, what do you say? Yeah, the fines, and that was in the lottery. So <laughs> the one driving below speed could win this money, and it was a huge, huge uh, <coughs> success. And actually, the speed was lowered from 35 kilometers an, an hour as an average to 25 and everyone was in for it so it was a great success so it's a quite a nice way to change your behavior by using gaming elements and making it in a fun way so uh, actually we are already gamified um, let's see. The average game player is 30 years old, so it's not just the young kids playing nowadays. And 97% of all kids between 12 and 17 play online games. And imagine, these are the people that are coming out uh, in work life and everywhere, just in a couple of years. And they for them, this mindset is a natural way. They communicate with friends within the games. They, they live their lives uh, within the games as a natural part of everyday life. And actually, 37% are older than 35. And 47% of all game players are women. So. That is quite interesting. And also, according to Gartner, according to Gartner, gamification will have a significant business impact and become an important mean for organizations to engage audiences at a deeper level. Yeah, according to Gartner, also um, global Fortune 2000 companies will have uh, at the end of 2014 year uh, at least one system internally which is gamified. So it's really important to see the trend in this industry and to be within the trend and to try to achieve the gamification elements and to implement the gamification elements within the different systems within the company. And then how to do this? Uh, there are, uh, you could uh, imagine what type of things you can uh, accomplish by using gamification. Uh, for instance, within your company or uh, at your when working with your customers and all that. But first of all, you really need to know what are your business objectives because if you don't have that clear, it's uh, difficult to to um, succeed when uh, working in gamification. And. Uh, you have to really know what you want to achieve. And when it comes to, to gamification, it's all about changing behaviors or enhancing behaviors. So you have to see what kind of behaviors do we want to change <coughs> or what kind of behaviors do we want to enhance. That is uh, the key. And of course, you have to know your target audience. You have to know their motivators, what motivates them. And also, you need to know what demotivates them. That won't come up. So, there you are. What demotivates them? Yeah, the target audience actually can be not only your employees, 
but it can be also your customers or partners that you want to engage within your business systems and solutions and implement the gamification elements to that. And uh, when it comes in the gaming world, uh, we talk about four types of players. Uh, we have the achievers. The achievers, they really want to win. They are, like to collect points and get badges and all that. So uh, that what they, uh, that's their motivators and their drivers. Then you have the explorers. The explorers, they want to explore, explore new things. And they can actually put uh, really um, time and effort and doing uh, repetitive things just to come to another level uh, within a game for instance, because they are so uh, curious about what happens next. Then you have the socializers. The socializers, they like to socialize, uh, networking and all that. Actually, they are more into to this than the game in itself. So for mm -hmm. them, it's the social networking that is their drivers and motivators. And then we have the killers. The killers, they are quite similar to the achievers. They love to win and all that, and get points and getting high on, on the high score lists. But also, they love to see others lose. <laughs> so that is what drives them as well. Uh, which group do you think uh, in common is the, most, uh, is the largest one? Do you think it's the achiever, explorer, socializer or killer? You have an idea? Any ideas? Achievers. I heard some different things They're talking about the achievers, some said the socializer, and, and the explorer. Actually, it's the socializer. 80% uh, are socializers. <coughs> then it's about 10% that are achievers and 10% uh, explorers. The killers actually are only one percent, but uh, of course, <laughs> yep. of course, it's always a combination of these four. It depends on which target your target group is. For instance, a sales force in your company that might probably be achievers with a little mix up of uh, socializing. So it's a mix of these that. Um, and it depends on the situation, of course. Yeah, and if you would like to imagine you would like to gamify your systems internally and you own a lab, a uh, research lab, <coughs> so obviously the majority of your employees would be the explorers. Mm -hmm. They need to explore in to, within the industry and you need to gamify your systems mm -hmm. uh, targeting this audience. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, if we are talking about killers, uh, imagine you, are, you have a retail store and uh, which sells the military clothes and stuff to people. So obviously the majority of your customers and target audience would be the killers who would <laughs> love to do these things. Uh, <clears throat> so you need to focus on your audience uh, and to imply the uh, correct uh, gamification elements to that. Yes, and also when, when working with gamification it's uh, often a use of personas where you create these fictive uh, persons and, and uh, uh, what motivates them and all that. So that also is a way to uh, make sure that you do the right things. Uh, and of course it's very important to use the right elements in the right context. Because if you use some gaming elements in the wrong context it could be the opposite uh, effect of uh, what you really want to achieve. So that is really important. And you have to devise activity loops because in gaming, it's it, you still you need to have these activity loops. It needs to uh, happen things uh, all the time. So you have to decide what will happen at what uh, uh, in what situation and all that. And of course, feedback. Feedback is crucial when it comes to gaming because everything a gamer does is based on feedback. So they make their decisions based on what feedback they get. If there is no feedback, the game will die. The, the user won't, uh, they won't uh, go forward and so on. It could, for instance, be 
like let's say in an online store. If you buy this, uh, you can buy this as well. So you get this uh, feedback all the time and then you, based on that feedback, you take actions. And actions uh, makes a change of behavior. And all actions you do, uh, they could have a good, um, what you say, it could be good or it could be bad for you. So every decision you do when it comes to gaming is a way to uh, changing your behavior. And finally, you have to make it fun when it comes to how to do it in the right way. Because if it's not fun, people will lose interest. So, because fun motivates us. And fun is the key in all gamification. And now, Arthur will uh, give some examples. Yeah, during the last years, we developed a couple of solutions in Sigma Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, as you can see, the first one is the most interesting one, probably, it's in training. Actually, this is the solution that helps to teach uh, English and to study English for student, for school people or school boys and girls. Uh, so uh, the idea is that you are playing and you are learning the system and you're learning the English language. The idea is that uh, there are different gaming situations behind that and different, uh, so you need to go and pick up something <coughs> and as a result you will uh, listen and hear all the things in English. Uh, so, and of course, the target for the kids would be the hit the dragon and kill the dragon within the elements they collected during the game. So, for, this is really, uh, you can read all the testimonials from the teachers that were trying to play with these games to, to the students. And they were really amazed how the kids engaged by the uh, learning English within the game. <coughs> Another example is a uh, quite interesting thing for uh, the United States company, public utility <coughs> company. They would like to, to uh, they sell electricity, but at the same time they would like to implement, to imply for clean, green living, living programs. And they want to be part of the green living pro program within the United States. So they, what they did, they, want, uh, they announced a quiz uh, for their customers. Ni uh, around 9,000 users were playing. And there were something like 40 questions in a quiz and uh, they came up during the day. Not all of the questions, of course, but a uh, couple questions a day and when they see the, uh, the question on their mobile phone, they just need to hit down, uh, answer who is the first one, who is the second one, and get the score. So uh, at the end, uh, there were something like uh, 82 correct answers uh, among the 9,000 users. And uh, since they uh, were implied to this uh, Green Living program, if uh, only 3,000 users which were played will implement these new rules to Green Living, they would save the electricity uh, like four hours to make light in, in the night between the Stockholm and Gothenburg, the, all the road. So you can imagine how important that is uh, for the uh, for the community and for the society. Another example of this pl platform, the, uh, mm -hmm. it was the installation of the uh, cold center training, uh, cold centers um, agents. They had 30 employees and they, mm -hmm. of course you have the majority of questions that are repeatable, but at the same time you have some uh, rare questions that should be answered by the cold center agents. And they would like to increase the knowledge within the four different uh, uh, directions of the, uh, of the public utility company and answering the questions. And as a result, um, they have these uh, uh, call center agents, they spend only one, of the, one to three minutes a day. So on average, only two minutes a day answering the quiz questions. It was uh, something like 50 training days. And as a result, they had 15% uh, of this knowledge quit, uh, knowledge lift. Mm. And um, the idea is that this knowledge, they will, it keeps within the team and within the call center agents because they were playing and they were engaged to answer those questions. They had the leaderboards, they had the gift cards uh, from the companies, uh, from the company management and so on. So they were motivated and engaged. And they said that, okay, for a time being, we 
uh, see the lift and we see that the uh, majority of the employees are speaking and uh, can answer those rare questions. But um, let's try to uh, check in a half year from now how it will be. Will it be the same the knowledge or it will disappear and they forget everything. Mm -hmm. But and as a result, uh, the interesting fact that uh, all of the employees, they were able to show the exact the same uh, result they showed previously half a year ago. So the knowledge does not disappear. It keeps it within the heads because they were motivated and engaged within the system. And another thing that uh, we implement within our company is um, we have a 450 people uh, in Ukraine developing in software. And of course they're engaging by the software development process. But we also want them to be engaged uh, within the company, within the team, and to have uh, some kind of good relations. That's why we uh, launched internal blog within the company. Um, and in order to motivate the people uh, to start using this blog for communications, but rather than something else, um, we uh, try to and we implement the gamification practices uh, within this blog. So we have different leaderboards, uh, different uh, scores, uh, and some other things that were accepted accessible by the employees and as a result uh, after the um, uh, half year uh, half year using this internal block gamification elements we see that uh, almost 15 percentages were increased the number of posts different coming uh, adding comments uh, shares likes and so on so you can see that gamification elements they can bring the engagement for your customers for your employees uh, and uh, for everyone who is using the business systems. So the idea behind the gamification, as we said from the beginning, is to use game elements within the business or any other solutions that are not, not actually a play. Um, so, yes. Yes, that's the answer. <laughs> A game can bring in commitment and change. So that is our conclusion. Um, and if you have questions, you are free to ask them. Um, you can ask them in Swedish, uh, and I will translate yes. uh, if, it's, <laughs> if I'm, to translate. I'm able to. Um, or um, anyone having a question? Yes? Uh, for me, uh, the cost of creating a game seems uh, quite high in comparison to your other communication methods. Uh, what is your opinion about that? Uh, actually, it depends on uh, what, uh, when, for instance, like creating a, a whole game, like the minutes, the, the English, that is one thing. But then you can use like gaming elements uh, within your um, current systems to enhance and, and to bring change uh, uh, in people's behaviors. So it can be done in several ways. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It's more of a mindset, and also uh, if you uh, think about it st strategically, uh, the effects that you achieve uh, might, uh, you have to do this, uh, what you call it, uh, balance to see what we put in, what uh, do we get in the other uh, end. So, uh, for instance, if you can uh, make more customers buy things by implementing gamification, then you will get the the costs, uh, um, uh, what you call it, covered, and uh, uh, also even bring more money into the company and so on. Yeah, and I would like to add also, it's not necessarily need to be need to be the development of a game. Just try to use different game elements. So, for example, you have a document management solution within the company, and uh, you can see that. Uh, some of your employees uh, are always bottlenecks within the proven or disapproven uh, uh, documents. So if you would, uh, let's say, uh, to have a leaderboard uh, saying that we have the number of employees who are the top performance with the proven or disapproven and making decisions, mm -hmm. and these are the, uh, not very good performing, so if you can say that we will motivate you if you achieve these kind of results, and it can be just a gift uh, to a Starbucks coffee shop, for example, anything. It should be engaged in the customer, the employees uh, within the system. So it's not a game; it's just elements within the solution. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sure maybe it's a silly question. Have you just explained 
any thoughts and ideas about how game can be used in training? And I was wondering if you have any inspiration on how game could be used so, uh, problem solving. Yeah, we. It could be like, it depends on what the problem is, and also, of course, uh, who is the target audience. But the gaming elements can uh, very much be used uh, for solving problems. Like, for instance, uh, Fold the Foley yeah. uh, example, that is uh, one way to solve a, a problem. Uh, but it could also be other ways. So, it depends on what your case is. And then, uh, of course, it's, uh, there is always a solution. And when it comes, for instance, uh, uh, like the, the minutes, yeah. solving how to get the kids engaged in mm. learning English and so on. So. And in some cases you need to uh, join with your team members and to hit the dragon or you need to do something else. So it's just implying the correct elements for the correct situation. So if you have difficulty to make a decision, you need to... For, uh, force the people to make this faster or slower, mm -hmm. depends on the conditions. And also it could be like people solving things together within a game yes. type of uh, um, environment. So it could be um, used for that, of course. So if you have any more questions, you are welcome to ask in the lobby over there. And also if you're interested, I will be able to show you the game, the couple of videos for the minutes and uh, the uh, ring run platform that I talked. So you're welcome. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.